Hi, everyone. It's September 19th, <laughs> and uh, we're here for God Talk, and tonight we're talking about astrology, zodiac signs, that kind of thing. So we're hoping for a fun discussion tonight. Yes. So yes. let's go ahead and get started with our introductions. Um, we always start with the name that we want to be called and our pronouns, which I think is really important because for some people in the world, it's a matter of life and death. Um, so we like to honor that and um and just if it's important to you that just let's just uh, i like the way everybody has been able to just make it real clear um on these calls so thank you for that for honoring that um and our icebreaker question tonight is just um what is your zodiac sign and do you feel like and just a real brief do you think it fits you? So, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm I'm Carol, she, her, and I am a Leo, and I do think that that fits me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I'm Michael, thank you, thank you. King Marco, King Marco, I don't care. King Marco or Army Marco, I don't care. <laughs> I go kill. I go kill. So you're he him? Yeah, I am. Yeah. And what's your sign? Leo. No, you're a you're a Sagittarius, is what. But it was it, since his birth date was kind of assigned. I don't think it fits him at all. Do you think so? No. So, so I don't know. We might have been wrong about that. I don't know how to correct that. Anyway, let's go around the, let's just go in the order uh, people got online. So let's go to Suzette next. Okay. You got, you got you. Okay. My name's Suzette and I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a she, her. Um, if I was born one more day, next I would have been a Sagittarius but um <laughs> you know a lot of these things they say about Scorpios is like mysterious no <laughs> intense and int I'm very intense and Carol can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> creative yes protective yes 100% temperamental like they say that they can have meltdowns when um, they're in an argument. And I, I don't know that I've even had a meltdown yet in my adult life. So it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me, Scorpio. Go away. Yeah, Leo and Jared. They can't see who you're pointing at, babe. <laughs> okay, go, go. So. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Leo. It's uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a Capricorn. And I think the description of Capricorn fits me. They said they're stubborn. They're good with money. Um, I don't know what other descriptions, but I, I think it fits me. That's a lot. <laughs> 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 it's so cute. Nice. Does um, he hold the purse strings, Jared? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Or without him. <laughs> so he will be fine. <laughs> um, hi everyone. My name's Jared. Um, my pronouns are all of the above. Um, and uh my so I have a, um, what is it? A six sign stellium in Pisces. So uh, what that means is I'm like super Pisces. I got a lot of Pisces going on, right? Um, <laughs> according to my uh, reading chart, uh, it's what I'd go by. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. 100% spot on, absolutely right. Like so, so soft. So mushy, right? So sweet, so loving, right? Um, 
I, I, you know, a little bit dreamy, right? Kind of, kind of lose my way very easily. I'm a little delulu sometimes, right? That's that's what makes me a hit with my count with my clients because I I believe them immediately all of their delusions every lie that they tell me, um and it's great <laughs> we live in a shared delusion. I love it. But yeah, I mean, yeah, so far so so accurate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're muted, Carol. Is it Craig's time to shine? Or is it Adrian? Oh, Carol, you're. Uh, oh, I was muted. I was I was asking Adrian to go, and that nobody could hear me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, Adrian, he, him. Uh. Well, my sign is Taurus. Uh. So, honestly, I don't follow as closely on on zodiac signs i know that i do a lot of uh what pasta and p what pasta are you but depending on your zodiac sign and what you know what pizza are you depending so lots of that but can i say that i really follow that i do know that they say that we're like the bull and very stubborn but i don't know if i'm really that that it fits me. Maybe Craig's like, oh yeah, definitely. But honestly, for me, I I, <laughs> I don't think I really don't think that I really like. Oh yeah, that definitely gets me to a T. That that's where I'm at. It's like, but who knows? Okay, Craiger. Pronouns are he. Oh, uh, Craiger. I'm not getting any audio from you either. You can't hear me. You're just you're oh. just quieter. I wonder if you're just farther away from your mic or something. Is that better? A uh, small amount, but still difficult to hear. Hold on, let me see if I can change to. Is that better? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, I just changed the. Okay, so Craiger, he, they, I am a Scorpio as well. I think I am a year and one day older than Suzette, maybe, maybe two years and one day. Um, my birthday is the Don't 19th. Don't we have the same birthday? No, we, uh, mine's the 19th and you're the 21st, oh. right? Or the 20th? Yeah. Correct, 21st. Yeah, so, um, and I actually, I was like one week older than Reverend Vicki, Vicki Gibbs. <laughs> so um yeah so yeah i'm a scorpio you know I, I meet some of the definition in terms of being very loyal uh very trustworthy and very sexy and you know very you know very sensual and sexy and and but but don't cross the scorpio because the stinger is going to come out if you if you do me if you do me wrong uh-uh <laughs> Not to me, right? <laughs> that was a great description. Okay, okay. Craig. Okay. And hi, Craig. Uh, he, him, mostly, but uh, any pronouns will do. Uh, I am a Leo, um, pretty squarely in the middle of Leo season. My birthday is August 12th. Uh, Leo's largely characterized as leaders, as like they view themselves as like the the, the main character syndrome. <laughs> um, to put that in like more modern <laughs> modern terms, um, I don't know that it suits me fully. Maybe to like some extent, but not always. I'm not really a very flashy, showy person. Um, I do tend to occupy positions of leadership occasionally with things that I'm involved with. Uh, I think just because everybody else says no, so I tend to be just like, okay, fine. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I'm not sure. Definitely not the flashy, showy type mm. side of that profile, at least not physically speaking. 
<laughs> we used to, uh, mm. I, when I found out so many of my friends were Leos, we, we just decided to all have our birthday parties together and we would have Leo parties back oh, in nice. my house with lots of land. Yeah, and <laughs> hey, got my mama. Mama, so that was gave, fun. Mama, mama yeah, okay, I, I like good. celebrating birthdays, don't I? Okay, oh, you mama, so, oh, you. So, Zodiac kind of brings us, and there's lots of different ways to think about it, but basically, we're talking about astrology, and the church over the years has had some very different viewpoints of, um, of astrology and of the zodiac here is a very interesting fresco that i found um it from the 17th century in an eastern orthodox church i'm just gonna hold this up and see, see okay. it's, it's jesus in the middle of a zodiac sign uh, of zodiac um circle isn't that interesting Mm -hmm. um there and there are 12 signs just like the 12 apostles um there are um that even though there there were various opinions about astrology and judaism um there's a there's a type of astrology based on the kabbalah which says that maybe the 12 tribes of israel correlate with the with the 12 zodiac signs. So mm -hmm. um I mean there's so there's there's some of that in the church. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't know, maybe some of you know more history than I do. What what comes to mind when you think of the church and um and zodiac? Oh she did her research. <laughs> <laughs> I mean um to my knowledge um you know, um, you know, astrology is a huge thing for my my people, my generation, but also like uh, like in all both sides of my actual family. Um, and so for for me, um, the church had mixed messages with it. Right. Like on one hand, there's a three wise men who, you know, uh, followed a star to find Jesus Christ. Right. On the other hand, divination is wrong but on the other hand if you open up a bible to ask yourself uh you know a question right like and then it just turns to the right page that's divinate <laughs> right like and so you get like so much right like conflict and nuance and argument and you can argue for days right but there's um there like just like you said there is a cult of thought that um there are a lot of astrological themes within the Bible itself, right? There is, um, uh, for <laughs> just like you said, the 12 um, uh, tribes of Judah and also the 12 apostles, right? And also, right, like the, the, the fact that there are like so many, like you look at the book of Revelations, it's like stars on top of stars on top of stars, right? Like the sun gets blotted out, right? Like there's so many, so many astrological occurrences occurring, you know, there's all these things happening in the skies, right? The lines, you know, uh, in, enveloping like this, the, the Scorpio, right? Like all these different, you know, like a lot of it, um, it, it's, it's sort of like in the, um, the Bible does this thing in the book of Ecclesiastes where it's like, on one hand, this is, this is terrible. On the other hand, this is great, right? And it, in, it's kind like, that's kind of what I've seen that the Bible is uh, covered as far as the, the, the word astrology is concerned. There are a there are a few verses in the Bible that just uh talk about and they, there are verses like in Job, for example, where it says things like, Well, who made Orion? Who put the belt on Orion and who put um you know who made the bear? Um and and so I I, I guess that's kind of how I've thought about astrology was, well, um, 
the, our, our universe is so complex and so amazing. Um, why, I, I mean, how could you say that that's not of God? Um, if, if all these complexities are, if the moon is affecting the tides and affecting our, uh, our, so many things on our earth, then why wouldn't the stars, um, have some, have some influence uh why why wouldn't god have why would you not attribute that complexity to god why hey why <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was discussing kind of the um you know when you talk about the three wise men adrian and i were talking about that a little bit um before before dinner earlier today and we we're kind of talking about the same thing which is you have these very exact prescriptions against things like astrology and divination and then you have the wise men um <laughs> who and i'm like how like it would be it would be one thing if it was so consistent and yet it is not um because one of the one of the if not the largest event in the holy book um is uh, in involves folks following a star to find um uh to find the newborn christ right um and even even outside of that one particular example there are other mentions of things that lean towards um like astrological interpretation um so like like it it says like how how will you know the coming of the end times and it's like well there will be signs in the stars and in the sun and the heavens um or something to that effect i'm paraphrasing um and it's like what 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 is that if also not some sort of astrology um so and i know there's at least a few other examples that i'm um forgetting right now but i think there were also and maybe i am I am by no means a biblical scholar. So, but I feel like there's also examples mentioned um, in like the tribes of Israel of occasional like um, uh, like temple astrologers also. Um, so, so it, it's just very interesting and odd to me how you have that back and forth and I don't think I've ever seen anyone really explain that, except to like when I when I grew up, um, it was very much in that like um, '80s, like early '90s, satanic panic era, um, where like anything that was not anything that was secular was immediately you know viewed in the light of, well, that's the devil. Um, and so I don't think I ever encountered anyone who truly like worked to um, reconcile or explain things um, that really helped it to make sense. Um, I mean, today, do I place any, um, like any weight on astrology? Not myself, but also I don't think I view it with the same derision of the, um, you know, of the of the leadership figures of my youth, um, but I also would be curious to to read um, someone who's done some additional work on that because I think it would be an interesting topic just for the sake of it. But I don't think much of that exists out there, at least not that I have found. There, there does seem to be just Hello. lots of conflicting opinion. Man. And hi, hi, Lynn. Um, <laughs> we the there there was um a statement put out by uh I, I guess by the pope um um not this pope but it's quite a <laughs> quite a while ago uh, i started to pull it up but it was just basically um putting that saying no divination no what what they were mainly talking about what what a lot of over time the the um the in the issue that they have brought up 
in from church leaders is 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 what what I saw termed as predictive astrology, basically saying that we don't we don't want you try we don't want anybody trying to predict the future because we need to put our trust um in God's time and God and 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 that's taking away people's free will. That's that's trying to say there is no free will if you're trying to predict the future. But I think when I think about astrology, I don't really think about predictive that that I'm trying to look into the future so much. I mean, we we joke about things like a crystal ball and things like that, but I don't know. There's just um, so much that um, that it seems like that people that very sensitive people can can mm-hmm. just pick up on mm-hmm. the the oh. vibes that are going on when I mm-hmm. just what I personally like um I, I I I get some a monthly newsletter um from a shamanic group called the power path mm-hmm. and they they send um they send out like a newsletter, like a monthly, um, do they call it a prediction? Uh, yeah, forecast, a monthly forecast. But I mean, I just don't, it's nothing like very detailed. I mean, it's it's detailed, but it's not like this is what's going to happen. Let me read you just an example. They, um, they say you can share the text. It is copyrighted. They can share the text as long as you credit the author, which is Lena Stevens. And like, here's just one paragraph from it that's talking about this week. We are now in the eclipse window where intensity of emotion, reaction, and projection may be amplified. Good boundaries and protection are helpful as well as reminding yourself to be flexible, resilient, and resourceful in the face of change. If you are experiencing good stability and flow in your life, there's no reason to jump on the bandwagon of chaos, confusion, and disharmony that you might witness around you. Okay. Keep implementing self-care and good spiritual practice as a way to stay balanced, grounded, and present. Now, to me, there's nothing in that sort of thing that says anything um, anything negative. It's It all seems like very good advice. It's not saying exactly what's going to happen. It's just kind of speaking in generalities. And it it seems helpful to me. Um what what do, what do you think? Yeah, well what do you think? Well, I didn't really know anything about astrology um growing up Catholic. I don't remember, of course, I'm Wisconsin Catholic. So I don't know if that makes a difference, but I don't remember the Catholics mentioning anything about uh, uh, astrology, either, you know, neither condemning it or not being for it or, or anything. However, I did have this aunt, Aunt Mickey, who absolutely loved running to the mailbox every Tuesday or when it was whenever the, the National Enquirer came to her house. And the first thing she would do is get the horoscopes, you know, and she would read them to us kids uh, when we were over at her house. So that's what I knew. That's what I knew about astrology, you know, growing up, you know, and then as I got older, you know, I got into the Bible and stuff and, um, you know, I didn't really, I'm like Craig, uh, I didn't really, you know, give it much credit, but, you know, now that I think about it, since MCC is such a, you know, all are welcome type community. I'm now I'm thinking about it and I'm surprised that MCC hasn't put their big toe a little bit more in astrology or, you know, had some, you know, hadn't dipped, dipped the waters of astrology in sermons or, or something, you know, and trying to tie it into, uh, you know, where we're at as a community. So that was just what I was thinking. Thank you. <laughs> Suzette? Um, this there was someone in our congregation who is a little bit she's christian but she's into the new age stuff and proposed a service calling it a service for people um 
I forget what they called the service, but it was some kind of like a spiritual thing where they were going to do <clears throat> certain things. Um, and, and those things included maybe some uh, tantric stuff and meditation and more than that but that per the, this person um also um specialized in reading tarot tarot cards and um i don't want to like out myself here but i didn't like it i didn't like it i didn't feel like the sanctuary was a place for that stuff so um, I voiced my opinion and it's not that I don't, I just didn't understand enough about what was happening. And, and the more I'm on things like TikTok, I see, I see that there's a relevancy with it and that I wasn't being narrow-minded. I wasn't being closed off. I wasn't being closed-minded. I just know that there's some dark stuff that happens with tarot cards or but I don't know anything about it so so I voiced my opinion and it kind of got like moved from the sanctuary to the chapel and then it got it uh, I think we had the hurricane and then that person decided they weren't going to do it they weren't going to do it but um there was there was conflict and so we were just concerned that you know maybe some of the the older people in the congregation wouldn't understand it or wouldn't get it or what was, how does it tie into Christianity or what, how was it going to, you know, be that? And I see, um, I, I see people shaking their heads <laughs> and can you, can you speak to that? I mean, can you tell me what you're thinking and why you're shaking your head? Like what, did I do something wrong by saying that? Because I I really I'm so traditional and and it's not that I'm not I'm not okay with making changes. We're having a lot of changes right now, right? So I'm thinking maybe this isn't a good time to bring those kinds of changes into the church. So I kind of want to stay on that Christian path. Um and um you know keep the the Jesus part in it really strong um and and not stray too much from the core values and the you know the uh, the the Christian thing that I that I was brought up with and the and diversity so I, I know <laughs> I know I, let's, it was let's, let's let, let Jared you, you couldn't what? call it a service in my opinion and and you couldn't have it in the sanctuary. I wasn't okay with that. So anyway, and I, I didn't want it to hurt that person because I like her and she's actually, I feel like a friend, um, but I, I couldn't understand it. So anyway. Okay, let's hear some other opinions. Yeah. Be mindful that you don't alienate my generation. Yes, I agree. You know, like that's not um because there there has to be a place at the table for mm -hmm. people of uh, of a um i don't know uh, whenever i joined this church mm -hmm. um, there was the uh I, I believe in the in the speech that they gave me in the beginning uh there was this idea that it was an interfaith it is community. right so Whenever we say interfaith, I don't know if we mean um, just uh, if you're Baptist or Lutheran, you're cool, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if I... Uh, but Jewish or non, you know, yeah. people or, agnostic, uh, people atheist, that yeah. they encourage those people to come. Yeah, right? Because we, I know some of the people in the next gen, right? They're not... <laughs> all right one like what you would de uh, describe as 100 percent, you know that straight narrow christian right and so it is at our own peril that we alienate the generation that comes after us because the church will die i don't disagree i just wanted to know more about it right 
So I want so to know why, why do you associate those uh, like what like what she was talking about with next gen? Well, so it is a huge part of our younger generation, right? Um, like it is not just like it's tar tarot cards, it's oracle cards, right? It's like we have cards with like the archangels on them, right? You know, we have cards with like. Um, you know, all these different forms of divination. And it alludes to the horoscope stuff. And it does sometimes, right? And it does sometimes. And so whenever we, uh, it, I just want to, like, for instance, at for me, um, we have people in my um, in, inpatient uh, facility that do also uh, practice that, right? Um, and so from it's it's and that there are so many more that just keep coming right the younger that they get they just keep coming they just keep coming right and so whenever we say that um this isn't a welcome place for you or your ideas or that we can't even make a space for i don't like there's classic satanism right the mm -hmm. like the then there's like divination tools mm -hmm. and i don't mm -hmm. For me, and she did allude to the fact that, you know, D Jesus healed people. Yeah. And she did allude to the fact, I mean, there was lots of things that made sense. So I just wanted to know more before we jumped into that water. Okay. Well, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you mentioned an association with tarot cards and dark things, um, dark, you know, uh, and I assume you mean like, satanic well it just used okay. to be ouija boards and tarot cards when i was a kid you know like that was the dark stuff we had to stay away from yeah yeah and that's a cultural idea i think that we're challenging a little bit here that mm -hmm. we're just kind of putting the idea out there that um uh why why is there that association is that um is that an actual association <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that it is um so I think we need to address both things. And I, I think we need to address um, accepting people who have different ideas. And we also need to address, um, you know, traditionally, why has this been associated with that? Is that is that a true association? Is that, um, uh, or is that kind of in the realm of witch hunts, you know, with the, uh, um, with, I'm uh, uneducated. People, people, well, that that's why we're talking about it. That that's why why we're here to discuss. So um, let's try to put aside our judgments a little bit. And 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 historically, um, I, I mean, let's anything. I mean, um, these these things are not not so much. I, I think the Puritans, <clears throat> like they, I think the idea of a of a witch hunt is uh, is is a, is relevant in this discussion because some ideas of uh, paganism and healing became associated with with devil type ideas and um, and and lots of people were hurt women lots of lots of people were hurt because of that false association and false accusations. Um, so uh, over the years, and, and I think the church, um, the, the major churches in the world historically, um, Christianity has taken so much from paganism, but they tried to, like with, with Easter and Christmas and everything like that, all those started out as, um, as pagan celebrations, the Yule at the winter solstice and the spring festivals at, at Easter. And, and the reason that those, those celebrations in, it became where they are in the Christian calendar is because the church is like, oh, these people are celebrating all these pagan things. Let's try to put our name on it and take over these pagan celebrations and put Christ in the middle of it. Um, but I mean, the, but I mean, the cycles of harvest and, and the short days and all those that kind of things that are, we associate with our holidays, those, you know, maybe we need to reclaim some of that. Um, I'm just saying, let's look, let's look at 
both angles. And I think I interrupted somebody. Was it Leo or oh. Adrian? Oh, just... oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead, Leo. Oh, go ahead. I want to see nice people talking. <laughs> 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 I'm just kind of like, kind of like in the middle because, you know, growing up, very conservative as well. So yeah, I kind of get where Susan's coming from as well um, with the whole item. My main thing is that I feel like once Zodiac starts getting into maybe like, where is that line of where is it uh, as to like, hey, some people, that's what they do. Zodiac... What am what am I gonna do tomorrow? What am I gonna do tonight? Is is this gonna be a good month for love or romance? I'm gonna have good business. Should I go for a work? And that's over and over and over. And one of the things that Craig and I were talking earlier today was that, you know, it does also kind of say in the Bible that to not worry about the day of tomorrow, for God will provide for today and He'll provide for the next day. You know, so take you know, trust in, in God as well. So I think that might be. However, I do know astrology is real and God does speak through the stars. It's just the fact that there's not enough people that have been given that gift to properly do it. Now, do I believe there's quite a few people that might be able to? Yes. Are there people that might be taking that to take advantage of others? Yes. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that many people praise and worship in different ways. Some people lo love the singing and the music, but some people, they just want to read the Bible or do prayer or meditate or just listen to the word of God. And that is their favorite part of worship and communion. So who's not to say that there's different ways to have like chanting or doing the bells or or something to that in, uh, effect as well. So, you know, I think uh, our communion with God is also individual as well. So I think as each one of us, but in the end, I think we should not miss who, what the goal is to build that relationship with our savior. So I kind of agree to. with what Suzette said, though, because the person that she is referencing is a dear friend of mine. And if I was in Houston, I probably would have had something to do with what I was, you know, calling a spiritual, a, a more spiritual experience. But I don't know that it belongs in the sanctuary. I think uh, it would be better suited for the gathering space, uh, perhaps not even in the chapel. I think this, you know, the activities, the way I understood, and, and one of the reasons why the person was going to launch this is because they heard that Austin uh, was, we started a Saturday night service in Austin. And so uh, this Saturday night, we do praise and worship music. It's a totally different feel than Sunday morning. It's more relaxed and communion is even more relaxed than, than Sunday morning communion. And so um, it was just about trying to create a space where younger people might feel drawn. So we said, why not Saturday night? Because, you know, maybe younger people want to come on Saturday at 7 instead of Sunday at 10. You know, you could still come to church and go out to the club and go dancing afterward if that's what you want. You know, <laughs> that's what I would have done back in my day, you know. And so... Um, yeah, I, I think this is more broadly spiritual based service with tarot cards and, you know, some of these, you know, other uh, alchemies, you know, would have done better in the gathering space, but not in the sanctuary. But, you know, thanks to Beryl, that all got blown out of the water anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks and I supported her. Beryl. I, I bought her stuff for her business when she was having a, a business opening and she came and did a reiki on my goats <laughs> so you know she came and did the the stones the prisms and stuff and it was okay i i didn't i didn't question that bless it <laughs> no on a lighter note uh i agree with you so sad that it doesn't belong in the church. I think it needs to be a separate thing. Um, my parents, uh, growing up, they were hardcore Catholics. And, but we still uh, 
grew up watching Walter Mercado. I don't know how many of y'all have heard of him, but this is a picture of him. I don't know if it'll come up on here. Uh, you no. Really, uh, let me put the brightness down. But he, he was a big astrologist, uh, Latino astrologer. Uh, anyhow, he passed already. But we saw it more as uh, a form of entertainment, a form of like, just for the fun of it, but never really saw it as like, oh, I need to I need to see what my astrology sign says and I need to follow that. No, it was really just for entertainment purposes. We would laugh about it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember all the controversy about when Nancy Reagan had uh... <laughs> spirit mediums? Is that, yeah. White House? Yeah. Come to the White oh. House, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy had her own personal astrologer. Mm -hmm. Again, it was all over the Inquirer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like 1982, it was all over the, you know. Reagan won the election in 1980, and I think it was by 80, 82 or 83, Nancy Reagan was all over the Inquirer with her astrologer and how, you know, um, you know, what a scandal that she was going against some of the conservative Christians that put her husband in power. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there are so so many different ways to look at it. I mean, um, I, I just I just think our universe is so amazing, and uh, I don't. I, I guess I, coming from from a medical career, um, I mean, there's a lot of superstition in medicine, and maybe more in obstetrics than some other fields. But we're like, oh my God, I'm on call on a full moon. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean. It just it, it seems it seems like those things affect us affect our our lives. It seems like the patterns the patterns are there, and there's just some people that are better at reading them than others. And I'm really hesitant to um, to to put any dark any negative associations. I I, I don't even want to say that's not a good word, but. Um, any negative associations with <laughs> with with anything i just want to suspend my judgment i want to i want to say um you know just teach me i, I want to know what people have you know what what we can learn from things like that like 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 you, like craig said the magi i mean that's a pretty significant s story in our um in, in our in our whole myth structure um, of the Magi and the star and finding Jesus. So um, it it seems to me like uh, like we have a long history and and maybe maybe it just helps to keep an open mind. Wow. We haven't we haven't even said uh we haven't even heard from Lynn yet. Lynn, we're glad you're here. I hope you're not having any of the audio trouble for as or the trouble connecting like last week. Um yeah, sorry I'm late. I was I uh, actually worked today and I got off a little late, so I was getting home and rushing in and I didn't have as much trouble today as I did before trying to log in. Um there, as far as uh, astrology is concerned, there was a time in my life where I I read my horoscope every day, um, you know, and it, it was just like it, I'm a newspaper reader and I always have been, and so so the, the horoscopes are always right next to the comics page, and and I, and so I read my horoscope every day. I'm a Cancer, um, according to astrology, and and so um, I did, and I have. Um, I think her name is Linda Goodman, Love Signs. So it's a really big, thick book, and it tells about you know a Cancer with a Leo and a you know Aquarius with that, and 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 um that was years ago. But in in thinking about it now, later in life, um, I see it as 
a study of the stars and the moon and and what where the planets were at the time you were born and that sort of thing. And so there has to be as at least as much truth to that because the tides do come in and they do go out and the stars are shining and the moon does do what it does and the sun rises. And so in my mind, if the farmer's almanac, uh, which talks about when is a good time to plant and when is a good time not to plant, if 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 there's nothing wrong with that, which is also based on moon and stars and I mean, um, then how could there be something wrong with astrology? And then at its basic level, God created the earth, you know, the and he the sun and the stars and the moon and no, no man did that. So, I mean, how could it be a neg? How could we attach a negative connotation to that? Now, like Suzette, I don't know anything about tarot cards. I don't know about you know uh, healing and laying on her hands and and that sort of thing. I'm just ignorant of that. But when it comes to astrology, I just I think kind of like what you said. I suspend judgment, and I really don't. I can't see anything. Um, um, I won't attach any negative connotation to. That's interesting to that. that you put, that you put laying out of hands with that. And uh, to to me, tarot cards aren't that different than horoscopes. I mean, it's mm. just. Uh, I mean, the information that I've seen from tarot cards is very similar to what I read from that um, that power path star cast is just you know very general it's like um oh you picked this card uh mm -hmm. you um you know there there might be a change coming or there might be uh, you know there might you know look out for this beware of uh, you know negative influences at this yeah time. i just mean i don't know enough about it it, it I doesn't mean, I, it, it never just, seemed uh ominous to yeah. me yeah I, I just I just mean I don't know enough about it to have an opinion. Um, I've so, never. But what were you saying you know, about the laying on of hands? Why? And then, you, I mean, because that, you know there there are there are some people who um, I've heard I don't know who um, can look at you and they can read your eyes or something in your body and 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 they can say what things might be wrong with you just you know based on on looking at you and yeah. and they can tell you take this herb or they can you know they mm -hmm. like i said lay hands on you well there's some churches that do that i mean who yeah that's what have, i think of yeah. when you say laying on a van yeah I think of, yeah of the but i've never attended services you know, a service had. like that so i don't know anything except you know um there's there's this uh uh anointing oil that they sell you see commercials on television this i think his name is pop off maybe and and he sells the 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 oil or the water or something so i just don't know enough about that to attach any negative connotation to it i mean i think you know it's kind of like people worship god in different ways and god means different things to different people so just look at medicine, look at, you know, Western medicine versus Eastern medicine, right. and, you know, uh, you know, right. Buddha versus Christianity. It's, exactly. it's, it's a big, it's a big, grand, wide yeah. open universe. And God yeah. has created so many things. Right. I, I'm like tarot cards personally scare the crap out of me. <laughs> so I don't want it, you know, like, no, yeah. no, don't turn yeah. the deck over. No, no, no. Because I've right. had it done before, and it's it's just no, I don't I don't want it. That's just me personally. But you know, there are other modalities. That's the word I was looking for. There are other spiritual modalities. There's all kind of spiritual modalities. You know, from chiropractic to you know tai chi to what do you call it? you know this thing where you you know move like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just you know we all get to try things, and if something works for us. If it makes us feel better, if it puts us in a better spiritual mood, if it helps us to treat other people better, go for it. Go for uh, it. But yeah. whether well, we should have it in the sanctuary. Been, <laughs> yeah, there, there have been some some statements on, on social media about um, meditation and and even yoga and just 
the, saying that it's negative just because it came from the East, essentially. But there's, uh, I mean, there's been a long history within Christianity, uh, um, not a long history. It's it's more modern, but there are people like Thomas Merton and um, Richard Rohr and people like that um, within within this the within Catholicism particularly that that brought those meditative practices into into Christianity um, and uh, you know I don't think I don't see anything negative with that I, I I think it's negative the way that it's been commercialized and now every little exercise is supposed to be yoga. <laughs> <laughs> When I was introduced um, and when I was in college, I had mental health issues. I was having panic attacks and, you know, back then they didn't really have a word for panic attacks. Right. So I went to the doctor and I said, I'm having these seizures. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to call them. And um, he was a wackadoodle. He said, have you ever played with a Ouija board in your life? And I'm, I was like, well, yeah, when I was like, he's like, well, there you go. You're possessed. You're possessed. Oh, no. <laughs> that sent me off. No wonder you've got such negative. In my head, right? <laughs> but, so I have a natural fear of stuff like that, that I don't understand. And, and it has nothing to do with, I don't want to understand, but it's like when you do something as a kid and you get phobic about it, I, I allude that to what that is, but Poor me, man. That guy was yeah. messed me up. <laughs> Wait, it uh, may just be I generational. Saw a TikTok <laughs> earlier we today or, or Instagram started. reel. Um, and it was like um, medicine in the 1800s or something like that, or 1600s, I can't remember. Um, and it was um, a woman going up to her doctor and saying, um, Doctor, I have a headache. And he's like, You're pregnant. And then it was, <laughs> Um, <laughs> doctor, my heart is beating very fast and I have pains. And he's like, you're pregnant. And everything was just like, the answer was, you're pregnant. Um, here, take this white powder and shove it up your nose. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> so that's what that's your, your, your story reminds me of. <laughs> just oh, like, yeah. um, interesting yeah, medicine. Interesting. <laughs> I think we are afraid of things we don't know about. Um, I think I think that and I think like Suzette says, um, it, there may we what we may be experiencing even in this group is a generational difference. What mm -hmm. we were taught when we were younger versus what our younger members um, have learned in their upbringing. So uh, but I think there's a natural natural inclination to be afraid of things we don't know about. I mean, after all, it's what keeps us from becoming friends with people who are unlike ourselves. They've learned or haven't learned. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's probably a lot of unchurched kids out there that haven't been exposed to right. a Christian church, you know, right. like ours. Right. Yes. Or yeah. haven't been exposed to Christ. <laughs> yeah. Not much less the church have not been exposed to Christ. that's the church that's the church and they're searching in their souls and their spiritual needs wow. you know what i think that's a that's a really good place to end marco keeps trying to interrupt and say how excited he is that everybody's here that we have such <laughs> a great group tonight so let's acknowledge yep. that <laughs> Thank you, Marco. Love you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. So why don't um why don't Craiger, why don't you just close us in prayer and we'll meet again next week and uh we'll be talking about the vote next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Holy Spirit, Holy Mother, Holy Father, Holy God. We're just grateful for another session of God talking. What an interesting topic we had tonight. I thought I wouldn't have much to say about it, but of course, I always can bump my gums. Thank you for that gift, God. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's just a very interesting conversation. Lots of different opinion and perspective, and there's a place for all of it at our table. Isn't that right? Amen. Yes, there's a place for all of us where we can express our thoughts and ideas, and there's no shame, no judgment, uh, just acceptance and understanding here at God Talk. 
So as we go forth through the rest of this week, we ask that you let us walk with you in light and love and do something kind and decent for another human being who crosses our path between now and when we meet again next Thursday. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Sorry I was late, guys, but it's good to see you Glad all. Glad you came. All right.